we will start with, or rather we will continue our study of Romans. But today we're in Romans chapter nine. So I'm going to, we're going to use the NLT version. Bonjour. Are you here? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. W. Kihoro. Please, you help me read from, um, well, I'll look short, from verse wood to verse four. Okay. Romans 9 or 10? It's 10, 10. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's true. My brothers and sisters, how I wish with all my heart that my own people might be saved. How I pray to God for them. I can assure you that they are deeply devoted to God, but their devotion is not based on true knowledge. They have not known the way in which God puts people right with himself. And instead, they have tried to set up their own way. And so they do not submit themselves to God's way of putting people right. For Christ has brought the law to an end so that everyone who believes is put right with God. Amen. So... I think what he did is the context is basically where we're coming from. Um, Paul talking about how Israel, natural Israel, I think we're reading it in chapter nine, natural Israel that God promised into, God's promise is still valid. And he began to explain it across. Chapter 9 for us. But the context here has come. It's telling us that. Like he said there earlier, that's the previous chapter. He actually wishes that the Israelites are saved. And there's, there's one key thing he said. He said they are zealous. I don't know. She, she, I mean, this girl used them. Um, Andrew used good news. So I don't know the word there. I can't remember the word she used. But the word here is zealous. But their zeal is not based on knowledge. And I think... Sometimes, from my own personal experience, it's okay to start with zero, but eventually, as you begin to grow in Christ, as you begin to know the Lord, it comes expedient that you put inside that zero knowledge. Because zeal on its own cannot bet the will of God. It's the reason why they were zealous. Scripture said that two things. Jesus told us about basically telling us that the people that persecuted Jesus actually thought that they were doing God a favor, if you are aware. They actually thought that they were, so they were, you know, uh, we are protecting the gospel, not gospel, we are protecting the laws of Moses. How will a man come and blaspheme and say he's God? This one needs to die. You know, they even came in, that John 6 or so, when this guy said, one man has to die for everyone. If not, um, the Romans will come and disrupt themselves because Jesus was getting a lot of traction. And there was a lot of noise, such that the Roman soldiers would not find out. You know, so one man, so for, our, for the sake of everyone, Jesus has to die. You know, So they really thought that they were killing or persecuting the person against God. However, they had a lot of zeal, but because of lack of knowledge, they walked outside of the will of God, proclaiming that it is God. So it's the it just shows us the importance of actual knowledge. And not just knowledge in terms of the wisdoms of this world. The, but the wisdoms of God, which principalities and powers did not know. Because had they know, known it, Second Corinthians begins to tell us that they would not have killed the Lord of glory, who is God forever, ever. Amen. 
and then I think three just begins to tell us, verse three begins to tell us about back to context, you know, they didn't know the righteousness of God, they were working in zeal. So they, they tried to establish their own righteousness. But Christ himself is the combination of the law, so that they may be righteousness for everyone who believes, not righteousness according to the law. Amen. So I'll just I'll just leave it open and We'd like to hear our contributions. Ooh. Anti modesty, anti one one zero, W Kihoro. <laughs> I, I think you've explained um like what I was going to explain actually. So Are you yes. sure? Yes, yes, I was reading this earlier to the end. You said what I wanted to say. You've explained it how it was in my head. So. Okay. So, what aspects of our lives can we use it to apply? <laughs> what aspects of our life? You you already gave the example now. How we can be very zealous in in different things, or like maybe say. If God gives you an instruction, you're just going with force, force, force. But like, there's nothing. Or there's no um what's it called knowledge in in what you're doing you're just going jumping like head first inside it without like seeking um god face that's like a way but that's not the context but that's a way we can um apply it here and i think verse three to four was saying how they were trying to create their own um, righteousness through the law. But one thing, again, that we've been seeing when we've been talking about the law of Moses is that the law of Moses, I don't think anybody could have ever perfectly carried it out because the law was meant or created to be completely, like that's the only way you can even get salvation through, through the law. If you can perfectly, I don't know how to explain it, but if you can perfectly or completely even do it, even though, like, definitely they still saying you have to do those sacrifices and things in the Old Testament. But, like, nobody could ever perfectly carry out the law of Moses. So God has come and uh, Jesus has come and he has died um, for us. So we now need to acknowledge and we now need to accept, um, what's it called? Um, what Christ has um, accomplished. So he has come to do what the law could not do. He has come to end, basically, the law <laughs> he gets. So that thing, that's what verse 4 is saying. So, yeah, that's what I have to say for this verses for this time. All right. Thank you very as much. We, yes, as, we, as we continue to read, we'll continue to see more of the explanation. Can you help us read from 5 to... Thirteen. This is Wait, my best question. Okay, Auntie one 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 zero. So, like, um, verse two, when it says, "I can assure you that they are deeply devoted to God, but their devotion is not based on true knowledge." Will this also yeah. refer to, for example, where you often find in churches that preach prosperity gospel and whatnot, where more people are focused on how their pastors have interpreted the word to them, as opposed to you reading your own Bible and trying to get an understanding from the word itself, instead of listening to someone else's interpretation. Uh, often you will find it in the church, in the prosperity gospel churches, which is what I've noticed. Can it, can it also mean that? Um, okay, so I think there's nothing wrong in um listening to another person's interpretation for 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 the Bible, but mm. what is wrong is yes. when you're not able to discern mm. when the person is saying something that is not in line with God's word. Because yes. now most times those kind of places people are conditioned to hear what they want to hear. 
Yeah. Like how I put it, like when um something is um when maybe say um I don't I don't know how to explain it, but I'll just give an instance. Maybe if I notice that you and Kevin, like when I speak about Fanta, yeah. If I come next Sunday, I'll still preach on Fanta. Yeah. If I come up past Sunday, I'll still preach on Fanta. You mm -hmm. get, but then again, in where those things thrive are when people are also just not in um, interested in really having a personal relationship with God, but in what they can get from God. So that's yeah. most of the times where those messages thrive. It's not just about the pastor, it's also about the in individual. That's where those uh, messages thrive when you're just interested in God, give me, give me, what can I collect? God, give me, I will do this, give me. Do, you get that kind of thing. Instead of like um, acknowledging the sovereignty of God, God being our Father, God, um, Jesus Christ dying to save us, like looking forward to the hope, to looking forward to the future glory, looking forward to all those things. You're just focused on what you can gain or what you can gather on this earth. You understand? So, I don't know, Demi, what do you have to say? Hi, Azonta. You said it now. What do you, what do you want me to say? Because this, this, I feel like this conversation is you're, you're looking for my mouth. That's what you asked me. Because what you said uh, was sufficient. Uh, without... uh, no, I was not looking for your mouth. Um, so I put something on my status today. If anybody can read my status, and it, this is totally unrelated, but I just I just said it because that's that's my that's my stand in this thing. Is it in, the last the last thing you posted? Let me check. Let's check it. That's my stand. Uh, okay, say so here's my take on all matters. Everybody focus on what God has told you to do. No. Submit in the place God has put you. Take the journeys God has given you and forget what every other person is doing. Oh, true. That's, Fair. That's, that's my take. You see, especially when it comes to specific dimensions of the gospel. Yeah. Because yeah. I realize that God gives people different them. Let me let me, let me know the word different dimensions, but it almost seems like people have different messages. Yeah, and different ministries. Like they preach, they preach a lot of things, but they have the core of their message. They have what God said they should do. Some people is actually to raise people that are prosperous. It's not a joke. So some people is to raise the prayer generation. Some people is to raise the this generation. They tell you. So you cannot come and say because God told you to raise a prayer generation. People that God told to raise prosperous people are wrong. You can't. What it means is that there's a different dimension of gospel committed to you. There's also a different dimension of gospel committed for your own learning. Not everybody is going to be hand. Not everybody is going to be leg. But all mm. of us must supply our own joints. So here's the problem. The problem why you might have a a, you might have a, and this is not every situation, but it's general. The reason why I have a problem with a person's specific gospel given to them is because you're probably not called to that gospel. Or you're not called to that dimension of the gospel. So like I said, let everybody find where God told them to be. Let them sit down there. <laughs> it's, as, it's as simple. It will, to cause, it will stop problem and arguments. There were some things that John the Baptist did that looked foolish. But yet, it seems like that's where God wanted him to be. So somebody came without eating and drinking. And that person came eating and drinking. You cannot not on your day stand up and say, ah, you that did not eat and drink, or you that ate and drink are wrong. Everybody is see. Scripture tells us. In, and it's, it's in this Romans. I think Romans 12. No, it's Romans 14. It say, let nobody judge anybody's servant. It's the master that will judge him. So my own. Be committed to finding out where God will have you be. Be committed to staying there. And be committed to growing under the principles of the place that God will have you be. Whatever is happening around you, please, behave like it does not exist. If you are certain that God will, put, God will have you be here, please sit down there. Simple as that. So that on that day you can say, Ah, God, but this is where you brought me home. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. it's, it solves a lot of problems. You, know, call, you see this prayer system, people are called to it. And I'm, I'm not saying that prayer is not necessary. Don't get it wrong. But some people, their ministry, their ministry like this is 24 hours prayer. Not be me, maybe not three, four hours now if you do. 
I will not know God. I say, ah, why you just pray? Why will you just only pray? Why you just only pray? You pray. No. I don't know what God told the person. I don't know what to, I was not there when God told the person that thing. What God told me, I'm doing my own. I assume that what God told every other person, they are doing their own. It's left for them. Because prosperity is very, very much necessary in the church. Very much necessary. Very necessary. Scripture says, I wish that you will prosper. Even as your soul, so is part of it, whether you like it or not. You see, this prosperity is part of it. Me, I'm prosperous, and I will continue to prosper. Whether people like it or not. You see, prayer is part of it. We will pray. You see, Bible study is part of it. We'll see, love, we will love people. You see, using faith, we will exact our faith. It's all part of it. But the focus of my gospel might not necessarily be the focus of another person's gospel. And most anybody's gospel is wrong or right. But today, this is what God is saying I should do. I have to obey Jesus. And it's not those reckless, God is saying I should do this to everybody, you know? Everybody just keep quiet. I must do No, that's not it. God doesn't work like that. Instead of making you rebellious and reckless, you need to check it properly. God works in systems. God is orderly. So it means that Sometimes when God tells you something, you need to say, ah, and this is not, you need, to, you need to ask God for the wisdom of execution. It's not just the wisdom of this is what God wants to do. You need to also find out the wisdom of execution. You say, give us this day our what? Our people, you don't know the Bible. Our what? Thank you, uh -huh. So you need to ask God daily, daily. There's one to your fellow Sunday song that I can't remember this song, but it just came to my spirit. Daily, I must do. Ah, I can't remember this song, but Basically, you need to ask God daily for the things he wants you to do. Don't be among those people. Don't Let's leave that place. Even if you suspect that it's wrong, please, God did not give you the ministry of correction. He gave you the ministry of reconciliation. You are, you are in no place. Except God called you. And I anoint I anoint you to correct people. That's different. If you won't have a different... You have a different carry that belief. You can even tell them in your church, this is what I believe, but this is what I think God is saying. But let's never be in that place where we think one person, we don't know who is this thing. It's God that is helping every single person. The scripture tells us that. And we can open scriptures just to just to show these things. Two things. Let me end here. Please. Let everybody know the Lord. That's it. Let everybody know the Lord. So no matter where you are, no matter what church, what ministry, what sect, what group you are in, be committed to knowing the Lord. So if you're in your church, please join the Bible study unit, join the prayer unit, join the service unit, partake in the Bible study, partake in the prayer. Do you understand? Show up for service. Be frequent, be fervent. Learn of God. If you say that's not the church God wants you to be, please, prayerfully select the church. Go to the church God will have you be. Submit under the spiritual authority in that church. Submit under the systems in that church. Submit under the systems for growth. Maybe one church does Bible study two times, prayer three times. And that church does prayer three times, Bible study two times. Please, submit under that one. It just saves you a lot of stress. A lot of I've seen people. See, I don't know why. It's God that will help. I've seen people. If you see their, if you see their commitment to their church, no, don't worry. <laughs> I, I said in the, I said in the exam, I don't want to call any. Ah, no, no. I, am, I don't even know. What did they tell you, people? Hey. And if you, because of that, eh, they make when it comes to advancing the kingdom, and eh, the, the way they advance the kingdom, and I'm not saying that the most advanced of kingdoms, but because of their focus. An understanding of the the part of the gospel or the mini the, the the dimension of the gospel committed to them. They understand it, they accept it, they're committed to it. So the 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 they collectively pull up pull, pull energies together and resources together to advance the gospel continuously. You see it amongst them. Continuously. But if you're in a place, you say, ah, is this place right? Is this place wrong? Please find out the place that God says you stay in. So that you can, so you can do something useful. 
the time where I used to say whether uh, James is right and John is wrong, that time, you should use that time, you can use to advance the gospel. You use that time, you can use to read your Bible and know Jesus. So just find the place where God will have you be. Sincerely, find the place where God will have you be. That's my, that's my advice for everybody. Now go back and say, let everybody, this is the end of all matters, all matters. Let everybody, that's my own opinion, let everybody find out what God will have them do. Find that where God will have them be and commit to it. And every other thing, do like it does not exist. Because God is only, I don't know, I can't remember the scripture, but I've heard it from preacher's mouth. So, so I have to tell the scripture to confirm it. That God will judge you. That God cannot judge somebody that told to stay in Abuja based on the thing in Sokoto. That God will judge you based on what he has committed to you. That's basically the conversation. So maybe it's like the parable of talent. And God will judge you according to the things he has given you. Let's yes, use that scripture as something to, as a foundation to hold the principle. So God will judge you, or we will be judged based on what God has committed to us. God will not judge me. Maybe he called me to, uh, for example, or he got to music. He will not be judging me based on a uh, photography. I'm not the photography now. He has to judge me based on what he has called me to. So I will put, I will leave it there. And thank you. Um, while I was talking, uh, Ambassador Azonta came into the building. Let me just <laughs> say hello and hi to her. Hi, Azonta. Uh, hi. Hi, um, man, one true. Hi, Modest. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Azonta. Hi, Mayo. Hi, Mayo. Uh, Uncle Mayo, good evening. Yeah, are you hi, doing? I want you. These are the people eating the UK. They're eating UK money, energy money in the UK. <laughs> it's them. <laughs> Great to I have guess. you here. <laughs> if you're in church now, where are you come from? So that you go to church, go many. Say please, let us <laughs> honor God. It's joke. I'm joking. I don't mean. I'm not trying to slander anybody. It's play. I just. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I'm, for I'm, this call. I'm, sorry for this call. I'm Kenyan. I don't think I understand pigeon guys. Because we have a Kenyan on the call, so I'm just trying to use her as my justification to say I'm Kenyan. Oh, Miss Wanjuru? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wanjuru is Nigerian no? now. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah, I'm part of you guys. No, wow. You have to be part Kenyan. of us now, the best country in the world. Wow. So, debatable, debatable. Manjuri, these are just denied being public. That's that's fine. Manjuri is not debatable. You say it's debatable. Nigeria is the best country in the world. Remove <laughs> corruption like this. Nigeria is supposed to be after US in the world, right? Global powerhouse. So you don't know. There's mm. five. Yes, sir. There's it's five. The corruption. It's corruption. That keeps... yes, after Kevin, US, there's five. Kevin, there's five. Okay. Don't be upset, please. Um. <laughs> I will show run for politics or run for office. That's not verse 5, maybe. Because yes. I was never asked to I don't need Bible study. Romans 10, verse 5. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, we thank God, though. I'm reading NLT. So it says, I'll stop at verse 13. Excuse me. So it says, For Moses writes that the Lord's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 
Please, uh, Moses is like, you have a lot to say. I don't, so over to you. Yeah, I think I, for this one, I think I have something to say, to be very honest. That's the evangelist. <laughs> yeah, so I think I, I've shared this with like some of my friends, but I think I want to try and share it here. And the reason why, so there was something that you said, like from the Bible that you, that you spoke about, that for me, really captured um, my heart. And uh, it's about, sorry, this is about this Paul speaking, right? Yes. Yeah, so Paul was speaking about how God is still like, um, still the same for like the Jews and Gentiles. So like, I was, and I was still doing like my Bible study to see about how God is fair. But this is what I'm trying to say, what's really captured my heart in the, because it was like my personal emotion, but like it's also like um resonates like what Paul is speaking about here. So he said, as I look at myself as a Christian, in terms of belonging to Christ, I realize that I'm not free to sin. As I look at myself as a Christian in the world, I realize that I'm not free from sin either. But as I look at myself as a Christian empowered by the Spirit, I, I realize that I'm free to overcome sin. So for me, I feel like some of the Christians, some of like how people see Christianity right now in terms of like a religious sense is like, some people just want to associate themselves with like being Christians, but not every Christian is really empowered by the Spirit. And um, that's why, like, from what Paul was saying against, like, God is still fair to like the children. So, like, whether you're an atheist or whether you try to claim to try and justify that there's no God, it's like God is still loving. And how do I say it? It's like, so I think I was reading, like, um, kings and i was seeing like like hezekiah like how wicked he was and it was like when he still called to god like after people like he killed god still answered his prayer so like maybe when if someone does like the most around your thing you can think about like you do in your mind and you feel like oh this person is doing this this person is doing that that's like just your own perception or that's your own reality that's like your own character or, like your own habit or like your own principles that you feel like, oh, this person shouldn't have or this person shouldn't do. Like, God doesn't see the world in that whole way. Like, he's so merciful. Like, we live, like, in a time of grace. So, like, for me, that's just, like, for me, I understood from the um, the Bible passage. And that's, like, for me. So, for me, like, me, I, I moved, like, on, I think I was doing my devotion. So, I'm just moving on grace. Like, not even trying to, like, think about why someone is doing something. Or why someone wouldn't do something. I'm just trying to live now knowing that oh Jesus Christ has died for all of it. So like I try to see life now from like that that lens. Like how do I don't say like just working on myself, like so what I think I can really work on. Let me work on the things that will really make me bear the fruit the fruit. Fine, yes, like you're already empowered by the spirit, but do we really work on a day-to-day -day basis to try and um improve like the fruits of the spirit? Like for instance now. Like, I've been working on, like, love, patience, and these are things I'm trying to also, like, intentionally do at times with, like, with our friendships. And just, like, how at times, and Bimi usually says, like, oh, try and make sure, like, you reach out to, like, a member and all that. It's, like, there are some of these fruit of the spirit that some of them you have to, own, like, in my own opinion, you know, what me I'm just saying. It's, like, I feel like some of them you have to, like, work on them. Like, how do I say it, like, mentally. Like, you still have to, like, also, like, play the role. Like, yes, we're empowered by the spirit. Like now you're already communicating with spirits, you already have like a relationship with God. It's a perception of how you see life. Are you working on a day-to-day -day basis now to even start being that whole person? Like now we notice how Jesus Christ came and all he was people he was with were people that didn't get it right. So like why are we now it's like where is where is it? Like where are we now that you can now start seeing this person is doing what you feel like is so it's like others like it's not only your place of your own past judge. So it's like, how do I say it's like, so for me, I'm doing this, it's like being intentional with how I am around people, like how I don't make it myself. Like, so now some of my two best Bible verses or that I live on now, uh, for me, I feel like it's part of like the major um definition of the gospel is one, love your neighbor as yourself, because I feel like you can love your neighbor as yourself. Like, I don't think you won't really get angry at someone because when, the person does that whole thing. The next thing you try and do is like you imagine that's yourself. Like what's what's the response? How do you respond to yourself? Like 
yeah, you could be sad, you could be angry, but like, yeah, that's just like a feeling for that moment. And it's like, next thing is like your brain switches. The next one for me is like clean or not to your own understanding because trust me, like I've tried understanding life. Like I've, I think I've, I thought at the point when I tried, I felt like I figured out life. <laughs> I think another thing again, I feel like I already, maybe like, yeah, like I want to know that, as well as I think I guess like maybe find like a pattern to like know Maybe I was conversing with God, but like now I feel like I've already understood, not like I understood, not like I understand the pattern to fully know what's going to happen next. But what I've just understood is like I just leave like everything in his hands and just focus on the moment, like just focus in that particular time, just like how we're having this Bible study now. So that's, that's my own take. Thank you very, very much for sharing. God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Um, any other person? Azumta, we do not hear your voice today, please. Okay. All right. Uh, we read like how many verses now? Okay, thank you. You're here. Yeah, I'm here, but I don't have any um anything to add at the, at this time. I think my you have said shared so much and I don't want to I don't want to add to what he has already said. So So like you said, love. So how do we love our, our neighbors as ourselves? Because, okay, I think my answer that because it's very, very important. I think uh, Jesus told us that that was the two greatest commandments. Love, love, love all your heart, all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbors as yourself. And he was spot on when he said that. That's basically what Christianity is about. It's, the gospel is about love. It's about God coming, to, God sending Christ because he loves us and out of our response, of this love of God is accepting, accepting the love of God through believing in what Christ has done, and from there living out the love of God daily, even towards God, by obeying His instructions and towards other people. So I think it's it's something very very necessary. Um, there's there's one particular part of this verse of scriptures that I like. It says, uh, this, Okay, kids, 14, we're not going to the 14. It's 14, they're like 14 to 50. 14 is really, really exciting. Um, but basically, scripture tells us that if you believe in your heart and you profess to your mouth, you are saved. So that's where the, if you're wondering where altar call came from or the principle of uh, say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus, uh, if you're wondering where it came from, that's where it comes from. Scripture tells us. And it's, it's, it's all through scripture. I think I got to a conversation with somebody and we couldn't complete the conversation because it was at the bus stop. I finished preaching and I was sitting down. And he was telling me, you know, he said, ah, say, what, what um, denomination am I? I say he's Baptist. What denomination am I? I said, me, I'm Christian. No? He said, I laughed. I said, ah, I'm Christian. I'm not in this denomination. And then he began to ask me about the conversation of um, salvation. That is the salvation. What, how so basically I was trying to get my concept of what I believe, how people get saved. If it's just baptism alone, or if it's the whole um, altar call, and not necessarily altar call in the sense that they want you to come out, but basically, baptism, baptism in my own opinion, is usually a physical manifestation or declaration of what you have already accepted in your heart. So if you do not accept Jesus in your heart, you do not believe in Jesus, you do not accept Jesus as Lord over your life in your heart, I don't think baptism is effective. It's like, oh, just picking people that, for example, from other religions, and just put dipping them in water, and say, ah, oh, they are baptized now, so they are saved. That, that can't be true, because scripture told us that he came to his own, his own did not accept him, but to whoever did believe in him, he gave them truth, the power to become children of God. So it says in that's John 1, Peter says John 3, 
that for God's love the world that he gave is only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. So believe. Scripture tells us across Romans that um, um, we, we are saved by grace through faith. Spoke about how Abraham was made righteous by faith. All through these Romans, I'm talking about how righteousness comes by faith. So we cannot now, across what everything Scripture has said, now arrive at a place where we say righteousness comes by baptism. No. Baptism is a physical declaration of what you already believe. But if you do not believe in God, if you do not believe he raised Christ from the dead, if you do not submit your life to him, then there's no need to be baptized. And people might have different opinions, but, but this is my belief according to, according to the consistency of what scripture has said about salvation. Because when Paul begins to talk about baptism, he relates it with us dying with Christ and being risen. So like when you go into the water, you die with Christ, you are being risen. So it's like a physical representation, a physical declaration of ah, this is what we did at the cross with Christ. But if you do not actually believe that Christ died and you are risen with him, you are saying by baptism, this is, what we, this, is what we, this is what we did at the cross with Christ. Now has no physical or now has no no spiritual um, implication. So scripture here tells us in um, verse 9, if you declare with your mouth that what Jesus is Lord, and you what you believe in your heart that Christ, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For what? It is with the heart that is believing that you believe and are what justified or made righteous. And it is with the mouth that you profess what you already believe. Okay, say, prof you profess your faith and are what saved. So even professing it is not as important as believing it. So what makes professing it valid is that you believe it. So we must begin to ask ourselves, what do we really believe? Do you believe that Christ came and died for your sin? And do you believe that this death paid the price for you even at the cross? And then out of that belief is where Paul now says, if Christ has done all these things for us, we judged us that if one died, 2 Corinthians 5, all died with him. Now we end here because we're already past that. And whoever died, rather, and he who, if one died, all died. And those who live, yes, so we who are alive now, no longer live for ourselves, but live for he who died and has been risen. What is that? It is us submitting our will out of an understanding that our Christ really died for us out of love. We are submitting our will and our lives to him. So that particular thing that Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians and verse 5 is basically submitting to Jesus as Lord over your life which Romans 10 begins to tell us today. So it's believing in all of all these things that brings you to a place where you now judge us. Where you now say, ah, Jesus, you are Lord over my life. In the same Romans, the same second Corinthians 5 that began to tell us, for now we judge no man after the flesh. Everybody born of, all things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. That is the same place that now begins to tell us about the submission of our life and picking up the life of Christ. That's basically what this Christianity is about. God loves us. He sent his son to die for us. We accept this love by believing that God loves us and believing that God actually sent his son to die for us and believing that the death was not just the son did something bad, but that the son died for our sin. And out of that, he has given us a chance at salvation. So when we believe all of that, we accept the love, we believe it, then we are saved. But not just that. Now, if God do, did all of all those things for us, our response to it is to love God back. And loving God back is keeping his commands. That is, we're no longer living to fulfill the desires of our flesh. We're no longer living to fulfill our ambitions. We are living to live the life of Christ even on the earth. We submitted our life to Jesus. And part of it, 
or the central theme of it is loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. So this is not disjointed. It's, it's the whole summary of it. So scripture says, laws, love fulfills all laws. So love on its own fulfills all laws, all laws, all, yeah, all commands. I think all laws are commands, same thing. So I will just end there and allow any of us to just share what we think. Because sometimes you can just give us a closing point and then we can say a prayer and then we can have quality nights, if that's okay. Anyone, guys? Uh, okay. All right. Then, as long as if if you can just, if you're here, you can just say, say a closing prayer for us. Okay, all right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for making us to come into your presence tonight to study your word and understand the word. Lord, we ask you, God, that you help us to apply your word in our lives. Help us to understand the word that you have given us today and help us to know how to apply it in our lives. Lord, we ask for guidance in every area of our lives. We ask you, Lord, that we would not um, go out of your will for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we commit every activity we would be, we would be um, embarking on this night, so oh God, Lord, we ask you, we commit everything into your hands. We ask you, God, that you take absolute control, oh Lord, and let your Holy Spirit continue to be with us and stay with us, stay for us, and stay through us and for us, oh Lord. Help us, oh God, that we will be guided by you. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Does anyone Amen. else have any prayer requests or anything you want us to pray for? Yeah. Or pray about? Okay. Yeah. I have a prayer request. So I have a friend who is um a student of Cranfield and okay. he failed service exams. But one of them is have so either way to cut the long story short. So he's meeting with the SAS lead and his course director tomorrow regarding oh. um courses, one of the models that he failed. According to him, said there are like 10 that failed it. But they're trying mm. to now um, the decision they've said is that he won't graduate with the certificate, he'll just go back home. Mm. So I just want us to like pray that tomorrow. So either we saw this evening and he spoke about the uh, as just as we we're discussing, so I think one point that he he wants to discuss with school is like if there's a possibility of them allowing him to like write the course with like the next set, and uh, so he can do like his thesis and all that. Because he said the first one he got like thirty five, then I think he said like mm -hmm. him he wants to like he already has like the way he feels like he wants to discuss with them. So I told him I was going to pray for um favor, um in the panel of judges. Uh, as he's speaking, let them try and see reasons with like looking at how much he has spent for his school fees. Let him see favor in the in the outcome. Amen. Let's pray for my last friend. We ask in Jesus' name, Lord. We ask you, God, that you would grant um my last friend success in as he's meeting with the. Confield jury tomorrow. Let it come out successful, O oh Lord. Let him not have issues. Let there be no issues or problems. Let everything turn around to his favor, O oh Lord. That you will grant him favor in their sight, O oh Lord, that he will not go 
without his request being granted or not, that this issue will be resolved speedily without any delay and without any um, further implications or complications of any sort in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we also pray that it shall turn to him for a testimony and he will come back to testify of how God has assisted him through the process and how everything turned around for his favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Does any other person have any prayer point? Modesty, want you, Bemi, any prayer points? Um, uh, maybe for me, um, okay. Uh, to pray that we may find suitable accommodation, that God may help us with providence and our finances. Okay. And our thesis. Right. Let's let's um pray for one Jew for regarding her thesis and financial. Doors for God's open financial doors. We ask in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we ask you, we commit one Jiru's thesis and the progress she's making into your hands, O oh God. We ask you, O oh God, that you would assist her through this process, O oh Lord, that it will not be difficult for her, whatever it is that whatever assistance she needs for this to come out successful. She would receive it, O oh God. Lord, I ask you also <clears throat> regarding her accommodation, regarding financial open doors. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you grant her her heart desires, O oh Lord, that it's it, the fact that it's been a problem for others, it won't be a problem for her, O oh Lord. That's wherever, whatever accommodation she's looking for, O oh Lord, that you grant her her heart desires oh lord and she'll get what she wants oh lord in the location that is according to your will for her oh lord lord i ask you lord that you settle her financially oh god in every way possible lord we ask you oh god that you open her eyes to see what you have put in her hand oh lord and you would open her her heart to walk with what you have put in her hand, O oh Lord Jesus, and help her, O oh Lord, that her finances will not go down. Help her to continue to increase financially, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Does any other person have any prayer points to add or prayer requests? Modest, did you have any prayer requests? No, no, I don't. Okay. Kelvin, do you have any prayer requests? No, not at the moment. Okay. All right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We commit tonight into your hands, O oh Lord, and we commit all our prayers into your hands that there shall be no limitations to what God will use us to do in these coming days, Lord. There shall be no limitation. We submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We submit ourselves to what God wants to do in this time and season. We ask you, O oh God, that we will not be insensitive to your move in this season and how you're moving, oh God. Lord, we, we ask that you take absolute control of the Colors of Hope Global UK group. Continue to build us up according to the will of God. Continue to build us up spiritually, oh Lord, and help us, oh God, that our lives shall be evidence that God exists and is a rewarder of them that seeks him diligently in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's share the grace together. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love, love of God and the love. fellowship of the Holy Jesus Spirit. Christ. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall turn the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Good night. Good night.